Alrighty, so the port diameter is supposed to be 60 millimeters and the port length is supposed to be 120 mils. And yeah, I translated all the German using uh, Yandex Translate, or one of those other translating sites. I don't have exactly 60 mil internal diameter pipe. So I got this one over here, and uh, it's slightly wider. Oh, the diameter is slightly greater, I should say. Yeah. Then, uh, according to this, Okay, so basically 63.5 moles. So now we need to calculate, well, what's the equivalent port length for the wider diameter pipe. All right, so because my tube or port is gonna be slightly wider, you know, at 63.5 moles instead of 60 moles, and I don't know what the tuning frequency of the box is, I went to work it out. So I just went to this calculator edge Dot com website and use the subwoofer tuning ones and yeah using the original six or sixty mils and one port worked out the size of the box the internal volume just yeah it's like three fifty two by you know one six eight by seven ninety nine minus sixteen so what's that like seven eighty three or something Anyway, the, the point is, using these original numbers and the original length, then we could get to 40 hertz as the tuning frequency, which seemed to make you know, quite a bit of sense. And yeah, then having a look here, we can just plug in the 40 hertz, keep the volume the same, and the number of ports still one, and the slightly increased diameter event, and it now calculates the, you know, the size of, as being basically 13.2 centimeters or 132 millimeters so let's make that happen and one way to make a nice uh, circle around this is to use a zip tie or if you've got well I suppose these zip ties are not quite up to the girth of my uh, tube here so we'll have to use two little plastic doodads aka zip ties now can uh, just use that to trace a line out. I'm going to just measure this off as 132 mils without the plastic, and yeah, then we'll cut it. Let's line it up 132 mils, pretty much bang on. Checked it at a couple of points around the zip ties, and yeah, about 132 each side. So magic marking device aka a pencil hmm. I'll figure out how to cut this neatly so yeah just giving it a cut using a fine tooth saw seems to be the simplest way so people going crazy and making jigs and I don't know what Sorry, not to make two cuts of a cardboard uh, tube. Besides, I can always just sand it slightly, so. And I'm actually trying not to cut it all through in one go. I'm trying to cut it a bit and then leave a gap just to support it a bit. So now I can go through again. I'm just following the groove. I, I cut lightly on the top of it all the way around. So now we can... Just cut through that bit, find the next little bit that's been left. I mean, yeah, I think some people make too much of a big deal about how hard that is to do. Cool, let's uh, sand that off, get a nice flush surface, and then you can measure and do another one. So I've just marked it off at a few spots. And move this. Yeah. Fortunately, this project is taking a lot longer because of all the load shedding. It's looking very likely I'm going to have to go the uh, inverter plus battery backup plus solar panel route. Yes. If you think you've got problems with your electricity price being high or your gas price or whatever price being sky high because you know 
you're in a country that's I don't know doing stupid things with sanctions, I suppose, then uh, have no fear. There are countries like this one where we're running out of power because we can't maintain power plants. Wonderful. Anyway, at least that's quick and easy to do. Let's give this a nice little cut and go back to building. Because at least when you're using a handsaw and you're uh, gluing things, it doesn't matter even if the electricity is on off. Well, it is on at the moment. So. I'm just making my groove to follow around. Bearing in mind it's the internal diameter, so if I slightly mess this up on the outside, I could still correct it, if I, as long as I don't go all the way through. But even then I could correct it, but it's a lot more work. <laughs> so let's carry on. Yeah, it's pretty good. Follow the groove, follow the groove. Make the groove, follow the line. Follow the line, make the groove. Okay, now I've got the groove, we can follow the groove. Make the groove a bit deeper. Again, I don't want to go all the way through because I want to you know, cut away as much as the cardboard that I can without having the cardboard tube collapse or you know, start coming loose. So rather do it evenly and have it holding on. I have to push too hard, make the sword do the work. And you've got less chance of collapsing the shoe or breaking through on the other side. A you know, way that tears the cardboard. See? No tearing, no breaking, not very difficult. And now we have two. Voila! Progress. Progress is uplifting. This makes you feel better. Woohoo! One of the tricks of life. Okay, so let's try and this is a bit, a bit of scrap wood here. And I've just got it propped up on another well, big chunk of spare wood on the other side there. So that can sit in there at the correct depth. Which seems like a good idea. You know. This stuff is very sticky. It's uh, basically used for sticking skirting boards on. I think it's might have like no more nails kind of thing, wherever you are. It's that kind of stuff. And it's gonna make one Heck of a mess on my fingers when I start spreading it out. So, unfortunately, I have to use this glue because I didn't do the best job of, uh, I said, sizing that hole when I made it. Uh, so let's try and get the glue in there to go into that little. I don't normally say high key, but it's a small hole, this little gap around the tube. As I said, I didn't size that hole so it would be a snug fit, which probably would have made problems of its own, so, you know, sometimes you've got to be thankful. Now at least you've got a spot to put the glue in. Yeah, I think that will uh, that will have to do it. I'm trying to center it as much as I can. I mean, not that that's probably needs to be that precise, but still. I'm checking it, looking from a different angle here, and I can see there's a little needs a bit more over there. And once that's dried, then I can flip it over and get it from the other side. Um, as apparently it will need blah 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 blah. How long to dry? Hmm. Coverage. My hat. That's kind of a useless set of instructions there. It doesn't tell you how long it's going to take to dry. Hmm. Time to go look up the technical data sheet for that and find out. 